Evolution.org podcast coming your way, episode 527. Steve and the Moffs enjoy me. What is going on, everyone? This one is going to be a fun one. This is going to be a motivational podcast. This one, we're going to talk about learning what drives you, how to stay strong in life. So, you know, first off with me, I went through a period in my life, my early 20s. I kind of, I got out of shape. I've been really athletic in my teenage years. Um, when I was in college, I tried to work out. I was so busy with college, juggling two jobs and full-time student. Then when I got out of college, I was working. I kind of got lazy. I started eating poorly. I was in a relationship with a girl. She ended up breaking up with me. And at the time, I was building a house. And I said, you know what? My house is going to be done in six months. I'm going to take the next six months. I'm not going to date. I'm only going to focus on myself. And when I move into that new house, I want to be a new Steve. So for the next six months, I fucking worked my ass up. I completely revamped my diet. Okay. I completely, I went from like 22% body fat to like 7% body fat. I freaking started doing yoga. I started weight training. I started jogging. I turned into a lean, mean fighting machine. By the time I moved into my house, I was a completely different person. I actually met the lady who um, sold me the house, the, uh, the home builder lady, the sales lady. And she's like, are you sick? What happened to you? You completely, you lost so much weight. And I was like, no, I'm not sick. I feel the best I ever felt in my life. I had basically uh, completely transformed myself. She hadn't seen me in months, you know? So I used that breakup as motivation to better myself. I didn't use that breakup and do what most people do, which is go and, and do drugs or drink and you know get wasted every night. I, I used it to be strong. Before then, I was drinking every night after work. I'd have a beer, I'd have a Smirnoff, whatever. And I'd just be depressed and angry and lonely about my breakup. And then one day I said, you know what? Enough is enough. Let me change that. So you can turn a negative situation, which was a breakup, into a positive situation. Or you could turn a negative situation and just spiral and have it have, be a domino effect. And ironically, a few months later, that girl called me up. She wanted to get back with me. Because she saw how the way I had changed. And, um, you know, and I basically rejected her. I was like, nope, I'm not interested. So I, I moved on with my life. So I actually became a better person, a more confident person. So that's what you got to do in life. When life throws shit at you, you got to freaking throw it back. That's what you got to do to get up. Go ahead, mobster. Yep. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, guys. Every And I say guys, gals as well. Every single one of our listeners, every single one of our listeners wants to improve themselves. Now, whether that's with performance-enhancing drugs, with psalms, with, with supplements, certainly with training, certainly with diet, every single one of you wants something better for yourself from the gym life, from the iron game. So you are looking to get lean, you're looking to get strong, you're looking to improve your bench press, you're looking to compete in strongman, get on the bodybuilding stage, you're looking to kick motherfucking ass. So here's the thing. It is impossible, I wish it wasn't, it's impossible to be 100% all the time. But what we're going to try and do today is give you a bunch of those things. Now, like Steve said, and I use this when we're talking in the pre-show, I said, Steve and I are of a certain age, 40 plus or 50 plus, where we've got life experience, like the breakup that Steve mentions. And we've used that life experience both then at the time when it happened to Steve and even now. Right? I'm thinking of Eddie Hall talking about when he did 500 kilo deadlift and they discussed the mindset that he had and he said, I imagine someone doing something absolutely God awful to my children. And I watched a, a clip of a podcast yesterday. We said I would have fought 200 policemen to get at this person. And he made the person, perversely, Steve, the judge that was going to judge the 500 kilo deadlift. He said, I would have, I would, I'd made my mind think like I was going to kill him. And I had to fight 200 people to get to him. And I would have destroyed him. I would have pulled his limbs off. And that's how he got into the mindset for 500 kilo deadlift. Now, that's an extreme example. I'll give you other examples, guys. So, at an ex-army, uh, it was it was a uh, what you call in America a CO, a prison officer here in the UK, a correction officer in the states, come to us and he described an incident when he was in basic training for the army, and eighty percent of the hundred people that had joined to train to become a uh, infantry or whatever the role that he was doing in the army. I dropped out for injuries. They couldn't stay the course. They couldn't do the basic training. 
He's still there with a few weeks to go, but he's hanging. And the PT says, you're wasting my time, you're wasting the Army's time. Go to CDMO, the Army doctor, get signed off. I only want people that are going to be here the whole of the 16 weeks. And he says, permission to speak freely, Corp. Fuck you, fuck the Army, and carries on doing what he's doing. Now, this is two weeks. He tells me his story a few weeks out before a strongman competition, which he's going to do when he's 40. Lo and behold, two weeks before the competition, he's dragging. It's that hard part of the training, Steve, when you're nearly there, but the grind is horrendous. And I called the lads over to the gym door. We've got him marching around the yard with two 25-kilo, 50-pound-plus bags of gravel taped together, and he's marching around. There's a carrying event in the strongman, so we're training him for it. But he's hanging, Steve. He's crawling. He's barely moving. And I called the lads over, and I shout from the door of the gym, you're wasting the gym's time, you're wasting the lad's time. He says, fuck you, it's like going 100 miles an hour. So what we're we looking at here, we're looking for what I described as the do not press button, and then I've pressed it. Eddie Hall's was the idea that his children were being assaulted. This guy's was something that had been said to him 20 years ago in the army. So one of my tricks, and I've said this before, isn't necessarily to be the greatest training coach, because there's a ton of information out there, guys, but it's knowing how to get the best out of you when you're tired when you're low, when your motivation's low, and you can do these things yourself. Now, another aspect which will help with the targets that you guys have set for yourself is keeping life simple. Look what Steve said just now. All he focused on was training and the house that he's building. Pretty much nothing else. Certainly had no other distractions from the ex-girlfriend that had gone. The stress and aggravation that had made them break up in the first place was gone. And I've had this situation myself. Again, many years ago in the past. So all I had to do was go to work and Jimmy. And that was it. And when I'm training or have trained for competition, that's been kind of it. I kind of work for myself. And certainly when I was at my best in competition, I was working for myself. So I could afford to make sure that part of my day was set aside for it. Now that's difficult, guys, if you're studying, or whatever else. But keep life simple. If you're at college, just do the work for the lectures and the essays. Go back to your room get your head on, and then hit the gym. Don't be going out, partying, or whatever else. Keep life real, real simple. It's, I mean, yeah, there's going to be times when you want to want to, want to break out and stuff. But if we're talking about true aspiration for the gym side of things, true aspiration for getting lean, true aspiration for being strong or muscular or competing, keep the rest of your life simple. And it only needs to be like that, Steve, during the time that you're getting ready for competition. Let me give you one more example, then I'm going to bring Steve back in. Now, this is language, and language sounds like a weird thing to talk about in its motivational side, but words have power. Words only have the power that we give to them. So the phrase sticks and stones to hurt my bones when it comes to insults kind of applies here. But if you want words to have power, and especially when it comes to motivation, they can. And even the word strength or power or fire, these are all positive words used in a certain particular way when you're getting yourself motivated. People don't talk about sad things when they're talking about I, I I will curse myself, something chronic sometimes when I'm in. Even this morning, Steve, one part of my workout was awesome, part of my workout was crappy, and I was cursing myself to get the work done. And one of, my, one of the things that came up the other day was King Kamali, the Persian bodybuilder of maybe 15 or 20 years ago. And he said he liked people to insult him. He liked people. His great rival at the time was Craig Titus. Craig would say that he was fat, he was out of shape. And he said, I like that. He said, if people blew smoke up my ass, if they said nice things to me, that didn't get me to fire up in the gym. But if you give me shit, if you said I was fat and out of shape, I would go out of my way to prove you wrong. So language is great. And here's, I'll, I'll, I'll construct this for you. This is negative affirmations, positive affirmations, and open affirmation. A negative affirmation is, I cannot lift the bar. A positive affirmation is, I am going to lift the bar. An open affirmation, which you can use on those slow days, is, I will see what happens. And it's kind of cool because you're not putting a negative or positive pressure on yourself. You're just allowing for what you can do in that moment. And one more thing on that particular thing, and I've done this a bunch of times, especially when I'm tired, close to competition. My workout close to competition is going to be an hour sometimes 45 minutes, sometimes an hour and a quarter. And even if I'm slowly plodding around because I'm tired, et cetera, et cetera, is one hour out of the day. So one in 24. I'm only training four times a week. So it's four hours out of the whole goddamn week. 
maybe six hours total. And it's only a certain period of time for the competition in terms of competition prep. So really, it is a tiny, tiny fraction of my life, a tiny fraction. You could be tired, your head could be fried from study, from work, from arguing with the girlfriend, just from life, from the, from, from the commute, from work to the gym, from gym to the house. Those things, can, they can all get in the way. But then you take a moment and realize for six hours, out of 100 plus hours a week, you're in the gym. And just the moment you go through the door of the gym, you should be almost meditative, almost like going to church. It should take you away from everything else that's going on and it goes to the gym. And maybe the first few minutes is hard, but the next thing you know, endorphins are kicking in, you've got a sweat on, the blood's pumping, and boom, you bring this stuff to the table. What about you, Steve? Give examples again, like we're talking about on the pre-show, gyms that you've gone to, music, images, yeah. videos, and even stories that you've used. That well, you, you've yeah. used well, you know, you hit the head on the head on both. Gym environment is very, very important. Um, I want to work out at a gym where it's not just I walk in there and I don't, I, you know, I don't walk in there and it's a bunch of freaking old farts walking around, you know. I want to walk in the gym where there's hot chicks and tight pins. I want to walk in the gym when there's meatheads. I want to walk in the gym where people take this shit serious. So gym environment is very, very important. And I'm not saying you can't go to like a plane of fitness and still get in a good workout because you can. Um, I have a friend that goes to plane of fitness. I went in there for the first time actually, and just like checked it out. It wasn't that bad. It, it's not as bad as, as the media makes things out to be. But it'd be very difficult for me to work out there. There's not enough of the stuff that I need in there. You know, instead of a bench press, they have a Smith machine, for example. That's just not going to fly with me. But, you know, you need a good gym environment. You need a gym environment where you hear that iron. You know, you, you need a gym environment where you hear some grunting here and there. You need an environment where the, the manager is basically, you know, in there himself working out. The owner of the gym is in there himself working out and looks the part, not sitting up in an office with a big fucking gut and sitting in a tie, okay, on the phone all day. That's not the type of gym that I like. So music, find some good music. Go on YouTube, find some good YouTube videos. There's websites where you can actually take that music off of YouTube and download the MP3 onto your computer. And then from there, put it on your phone or put it on your little pod player or whatever. I like to do that. Nice music really motivates me too. So those are very important. Gym environment is very, very important. Who you surround yourself with when you're working out is very, very important. It really makes a difference in your motivation. Um, having a good, you know, um, a good place. And, you know, um, just everything, you know, from the front desk person, you know, when you walk in there, are they, you know, are they assholes? Are they rude? Do they just like pretend they don't see you? Or is it a good just, hey, how you doing? Yeah, have a good workout. That's it. That's it. I don't need anything more than that. But, you know, just starting starting off going in there and, and dealing with that um, would, would, you know, is nice. Is nice as well. So just having that uh, environment is is very, very crucial, not just in life, but also when you're when you're training for sure. And that can really motivate the shit out of you. But having a gym that you walk in there and the environment is shit, it's it does the opposite, you know. So it's one of the reasons I really enjoy, you know, going to like a yoga class and seeing all those hot chicks and the tight ass outfits and stuff. That shit motivates you, you know what I'm saying? It's eye candy, but it motivates you as well. Let me jump in here, right? I'll give you silly examples, and this is gym stuff, okay? And it, it, I've trained at clubs. I've trained at what we call here as sports centres and swimming bath gyms here in the UK. But here's the thing, and spit and sawdust always works for me. You don't need to have this, guys, but I'm just giving an example, right? So I, I, I lived in Gloucester for six years. I'm on the telephone looking for a gym, and I go to visit a local gym just up the road from me, a few minutes away, but the heaviest dumbbells they got are 32 and a half kilos, which is about 65, 70 pounds. They were nice people. And I said, you know, when you're going to get some heavy dumbbells in, we might get this in soon. But it was mostly cardio orientated with lovely floors and I couldn't drop the dumbbells and all stuff like that. And then uh, there was another gym someone mentioned around the corner and I rang up and I know the name because this is the kind of guy that I have, Richie on the counter. And I learned his name later on. 
And I read it up and I say, blah, 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 what's the heaviest dumbbells you've got? And they say 70 kilo, which is 154 pounds. I says, what's your policy on chalk? He said, just rub your fucking hands on the floor. There's loads of the stuff everywhere. I said, I'll be over in 10 minutes, Steve. It was that kind of workout. Now, what about the place that we had afterwards? We had a warehouse opposite my house where we ran the business, but we also had a strongman gym in there. And we would have people come four hours across country from Merseyside, Liverpool, and from the South Coast. And we were in the middle of the UK, right close to Wales, where I live now. And they would drive for four hours, two hours there, two hours back, just to come train with us. And I'll give you an example. The guys from Devon, that's the South Coast, came up one day and it had been snowing. But they wanted to train outside in the snow. So they swept the snow off the yard before everybody else turned up because they'd arrived early. They'd made good time to get it ready. And one of the things that we did, and this is just an indication of the kind of desire that you want. And again, guys, this could be individual to you specifically. But I, I would use the analogy then, I would say, if there's there are athletes that won't train because it rained, they don't even want to drive in the rain to the gym, which is indoors. But my athletes was driving across country and sweeping the yard so they could train outside in the cold. There were athletes that would not train outside, even if the competition was going to be outside. And if it was raining, we would put our hoods up and we would put extra chalk on our back and we would do yokes in the rain, in the snow, outside. I have seen photographs on one of the pages I follow on Facebook is home gyms. And the guy showed a picture of a thermometer, Steve, showing one degree. And there was snow coming in under the tent, the canvas that he had over his home gym in outside in his yard and you could see snow coming in underneath the fabric and he would just put gloves on and get the workout done and you do not need to train in the snow or the rain or the cold you can go to a nice warm heated dry proper gym but you need to have that i'm going to get this done mentality and that's what we're trying to give you a flavor of i'll give you another example and it's more about what's specific to you. I mentioned the red button idea earlier on. That helps. But I used to say to people when they come to the gym, I said, I don't care if your thing, your, the thing that gets you juicy, the thing that makes you want to kick ass in the gym is a gay Greek poem. I don't care. So long as you've got something that fires you up, so long as it's got something that makes you come to the gym. Now, it could be as simple as an iconic image of Rocky running up the steps of Philadelphia. It can be Rocky again with those cut-out pictures of his soon-to-be-beaten foe stuck behind the mirror that he looks in as he has his breakfast and then hits the street and goes for a run. It could be anything like that. It could literally be the Rocky videos, especially the first two movies when he's running through the streets with that I have the Tiger theme tune going on. And that still works. It could be Kung Fu. It could be some movie that gets you emotional. I don't care. It needs to be something for you. Now, here's another thing. And I've had this statement. varies. One day, it's me cursing myself. The next day, it's me wanting to kick someone's ass in a competition. The day after that, it can be something else. But you need to have that kind of knowledge of yourself. It's easier, as we said earlier on, when you're older, because life experience has kicked your ass a couple of times and gives you something to buy into but when you're younger, if you've got something, if you can find something, even a token can be that kind of thing. One more thing, Stephen, I think I'll bring you back in for this as well. Setting a target, not just a I'm going to be leaner at such and such a time and such and such a day in the future, but literally setting a target. I will write down in my book or I will look back in my book at what I did before and say I need to beat what I did last time. A good percentage of people, and especially normal, not people that maybe listen to this podcast, but a good percentage of people that go to the gym, go to train, and especially when they first started to do it. But later on, they kind of just get into the habit of going to the gym and doing certain things in the gym and feeling good because they've done that, but not necessarily having a specific target. So setting targets, having a time and a date and a weight or a percentage of body fat, stuff like this, and sometimes openly declaring it but even just having it written down in your training book in a diary in an online online log will be a positive way of making sure that each workout is productive and you're doing this frequently again and again and again and then it becomes life it becomes a regularity have you set targets steve and stuff like this on the past these kind of things have they got you to, i know you fasted for days so what sort of stuff have you done to get yourself on that way 
Yeah, visualizing what you want to look like or visualizing how much weight you want to push at the gym or squat or deadlift, whatever, and just visualizing it in your mind and then just setting a realistic goal and then go doing it. Very, very important. Doing a log. We did a podcast about doing a log. Come on the forums and do a log. Set a goal. Hey, this is where I'm at right now. This is where I want to be, whether it be what you want to look like, whether it want to be what kind of weight you're doing, anything. And set a goal and attack it, you know, and just be consistent. That's the key with this. Um, if the more that's the nice thing about weight training, it doesn't matter what your genetics are. That's the misconception people don't realize. It doesn't matter what your genetics are. You can weight train just like soccer. It doesn't matter how good you have a soccer player are. You can take a soccer ball, go down, and play soccer on a team. There's adult leagues all over the place. You can go do it. You could suck at it. Or you could be good at it. You're still the point is you're gonna go have fun either way, and you're still gonna get better. That's the key. Now, with weight training, how much do you get better? It's very, very important. You can improve drastically if you have really good genetics, or you can improve slowly if you don't. But the point is you're still gonna improve. And what that means to every individual is gonna be different. Some of you out there, you may start out benching 150 pounds. You and your buddy start weight training. 150 pounds, that's all you guys can bench. Now, your buddy in a year from now, he might be at 250. You, may, you might only be at 200. That's fine. You still improve. Doesn't mean you're going to be like him. So set a realistic goal. Don't go to the gym and be like, yeah, find the biggest meathead in the gym and be like, yeah, and point to him like Big Al. I want to look like him, you know, But because that guy's probably on a shit ton of steroids. He's got really, really good genetics. He's probably been weight training since he was eight years old. So it's just not realistic. So wherever you are, you've got to realize that your genetics are going to be very different. So it's important to set personal goals that are realistic and just be consistent at it. And really the biggest, the biggest consistency that you have to do is to be mo motivated enough to hit the gym and not make excuses as to why you can't go to the gym. We see that a lot. And have you ever worked out and trained with someone? You train with this person and they're the type of person, every other workout is an excuse. Oh, my kid's sick. Oh, I had a bad day at work. Oh, I don't feel like working out today. I have, I have the sniffles. How many, how many people have worked out with people like that? Those are the people that don't make it. You've got to get to the gym. You got to find that one hour out of your day where you can make it to the gym. That's going to be very, very important. Once you commit yourself to something, you're going to be able to accomplish whatever you want. But if you can't even commit to an hour a day and put there's 24 hours in the day, you can't even commit to an hour a day, then you got a problem, you know, and it doesn't have to be every day. It can be every other day. You don't have to weight train every day, obviously. Mobster and I don't weight train every day, but set a, set a goal to do it every other day. How about that? And you could find one hour in your day every other day there's 48 hours in two days you can't find one hour out of 48 hours just to commit to that so until you do that then you may not be able to be successful so this podcast may be not even of any use to you so that's step one i think is find the time for this i'll jump back in here steve something that steve just touched upon i think is incredibly useful and it's why i have progressed and Steve's progress to where we are now, and that has been consistent. Iron is in our blood, and we've put the time in under the bar to be here now. In my case, 40 something years, like 43 years of training, Steve, because I love it. The bug bit me. And that might not happen for you straight away, guys, but it will happen if you do it every single day. Same as if you jog, same as if you ride a bike, you have another hobby that you love. The reason why you got good at it, the reason why you enjoy it is because it's part of your day. It's become something you just, it's become a habit. And of course, then the endorphins, the great, the exercise higher comes from. You get a certain level of satisfaction with that, the exercise high, just because you did something hard and you kept doing something hard. Now, something that touched upon what Steve said, and it reminded me, here's another trick you can do. Look back at where you've come from. What do I mean? So we talk about logs and we say, guys, pick pictures up, please. Show us a picture of where you was at the beginning of 16 weeks and then compare 16 weeks later at the end of the 16 weeks or whatever period of time. 
But here's another, you can do this not just with a cycle of training and or PDs, but when you started going to the gym. I'm, I started going training when I was 15. Do I look different from now compared to then? Oh, 100%. I look different from five, 10 years ago. Never mind 15, 20, 25, 30, 43 years ago. Of course I look different. So on my days when I'm kicking my own ass and cursing myself and not pushing myself as much as I did, I can go back. I believe there's one photograph. I might have it here. It might be my mum's photo of it. When I was age 18 in a pub in the city area of London with skinny arms working in an office. I've still been working, training for three years. But compared, I'm another person, Steve, compared to that person. And you guys can have a crap day and then say, oh, this is shit, and I could have done this, and I could have done that. And you go, hang on, five years ago when you started training, you was fat, you was out of shape, you was unhealthy, you had lung issues, you couldn't walk five, five, five minutes with it, uh, getting out of breath. Where are you today? You're much healthier, much leaner, much fitter. You don't have to go and do the doctor. You're not on medication for this, that, and the other. You have gone so far, and that's just in five years. Where will you be five years from now? Definitely one, I said, go back to the consistency thing again, Steve. The stick at it ability is going to enable you to get to what we call a 10,000 hour rule. The classic example is to get good at anything, you need to do 10,000 hours. Now, that what the 10,000 hour rule applies to you becoming a master, like a, a chess grandmaster. It applies to you learning your trade, whatever trade or business or work activity that you're involved in. It typically takes that long to become a doctor or a high level nurse or a surgeon or a solicitor or a lawyer or any of those great things in these great careers. The same thing kind of applies to you end game, high level, weightlifting, weight training, bodybuilding, whatever. If you start young, you'll be a great wrestler. If you start young, you'll be a great basketball player. But even without the 10,000 hours, you will be that much better after a thousand hours, that much better after 2000 hours. And here's another thing where you are today versus where you're going to be tomorrow. Because if you can look back to where you was and compare that to now, where will you be in five years? Where will you be in another 5,000 hours? The ability to know that you're going to improve again and you're going to be half as good again as where you are today is a thing that's going to motivate you and get you back into the gym. Now, again, guys, this when we talk about the gym environment, it can be training in your backyard at home with pig iron and rubber bands and water filled weights, but you're out there plugging away or in the most hardcore Metro Flex Gold's Gym, Powerhouse Gym type environment with people slapping you on the back and, and punching you in the face and getting you to do absolutely crazy things. Equally, it can just be plugging away to lose weight, to slim your hips, to get rid of that belly. And here's the thing as well. I have been guilty of this way, way, way back when I first started training. I would see the big fat guy come to the gym and in my mind, waste 45 minutes doing something. But now I think, hang on, he's in the gym every single time I'm here, which means he's plugging away as hard as I am. He doesn't want to improve his bench or be, you know, a grip champion like I was or any of those things, but he's still in the goddamn gym plugging away he's still doing the grind so now when i see someone that's a little bit out of shape well often a lot out of shape i'm one of the first people to go over there and say hi how are you doing whatever and then i've brought people over to them that have been massively out of shape i can think of one guy uh, at a local gym powerhouse gym who lost half his body weight steve he lost 154 pounds and I would bring him over, and he looked like a normal guy. You would not know that he'd been twice as big as he was standing in front of him. And I'd introduce him to this new overweight member, and I'd say, this guy, Dai, Dai has lost 154 pounds since he decided to stop drinking, start getting his daily steps in, and hitting the gym. 154 pounds, Steve. He was a success story, and he was one of a few. And then you're making that person that's already feeling bad about themselves in an environment where there's a lot of shapely people, as you said already, who've already made progress and had a good journey. That can be a little bit off-putting for some people. You've gone, hang on, this guy looks normal to you, and he was twice as big as he is now, and half as big as you are right now, and he's done it. 
And if you want someone who's been on the same journey as you to talk to, chat to Di. Have a chat with Di and say, how did you get to where you're doing? And so on. My girlfriend goes swimming and she said there's a fellow there that's lost probably eight stone to the point where he's going to have to have some sort of surgery to remove the loose folds of skin. But he's plugged away, Steve. He's gone so many times, put the mileage swimming up and down and become a success story. In fact, he's now dating one of the nurses that's going to be involved in some of the aspects of his weight loss and the surgery. That's the kind of, he's become a much more positive individual, but he's also made the journey. So it's, it's stuff out there, guys. Trust me, come on the forums, run a log, have us tell you, have see where some of the logs are from when those people started to where they are now. Talk to people like myself and Steve Smith, other members as well, will big you up, they'll back you up, they'll tell you to keep grinding, they'll tell you life is shit sometimes, but the grind never stops. You go to the gym and you smash it. And in fact, sometimes my best workout stays have been time limited and on my crappy, horrible days because I've gone in there and I'm gritting my teeth and I'm kind of steaming at life. It's pissed me off. This hasn't happened. This is happening. There's a leak that needs fixed and all those kind of things. Brr, get to the gym and right, that's it. Doesn't matter what happens for the next day. I'm just going to smash the fucking granny out of these weights. So I'm going to have a hell of a workout. Fuck what else is going on. Fuck Steve's previous shitty relationship and having to build a house. He went to the gym and he killed it. And he got into great shape. The ex-girlfriend wanted him back. The woman that was selling the property was probably looking at him and saying, what the hell's going on with your life? And he built a new house while he was doing it. He kicked ass. And so can you. That's what we want you to do, guys. Last thought, Steve. Yeah, my last thought, look, and like I said, environmental is very important. People around you, maybe it's time to move on from a relationship you're in because that ended up helping me in my situation, being out of that toxic relationship. She was a toxic person. I mean, she was, she, you know, she made me a worse person. So sometimes change is good. Changing a girlfriend, changing where you live, moving to a new city, changing jobs, changing gyms, changing the music. How about going through all your music and deleting everything and just putting, make a new playlist that you go uh, to the gym with? All kinds of changes can be done. And uh, change, change is really, really good thing. Sometimes in life, that's what we need to do. If you're in a rut, that's what you got to do to get things going in the other direction. Just make a big change and, um, you know, it, it can make all the difference in the world. So try that. Guys, the biggest change is going to be in you. And we want you to go out there and kick ass. We want all of our listeners to go out and kick ass, not just today, but tomorrow and all the way down the line. So if you need to, come back and have a listen to this podcast. Get get off your butt and get in that gym. Like Steve says, change your gym, change your music, change your life. Do the grind. Sometimes life is tough. Sometimes gym sessions are tough. Keep plugging away. You will be successful. We guarantee it. Please note, we are not doctors and the opinions on these shows are ours. It's our view and it's based on our experience and views on the topic. Our podcasts are for informational purposes and entertainment only. The freedom of speech and the First Amendment applies.